Are you wondering how to schedule and host a Zoom meeting for the first time? In this video, you'll hear about easy steps and tips so that you can enjoy using Zoom. I'm Marcia Chadley from the Creative Life Center, and I have a lot of fun helping others to learn to feel comfortable using technology, especially small business owners who are going online to share their gifts. If you're a beginner to Zoom, if you're not quite sure how it all works, this video is a great thing for you. We're going to start with the beginnings at the foundation and then look at a couple of bells and whistles that you're going to have fun with, like sharing your screen. We'll round things up by talking about how you can practice before you have anybody else on the call so that you're comfortable with the options and the controls that you want to use. I've also included helpful information and more links in the video description so that you can go even further with Zoom. There are two things that you need to do so that you're ready to schedule your first meeting. The first one is to get a Zoom account. A Zoom account is not needed for anyone who's joining the call, but it is required for people who are hosting the call. You'll have a choice of free and paid accounts. You can find all this information on the zoom.us website. For many people, the free account works really well. One of the differences between the free account and the next step up is that you can only have a 40 minute call if you have more than two people on the call. If you're going to be talking with one other person, you can talk as long as you want with a free call. Take a look at this information, decide what plan you need, sign up and get your account. Then the next thing that you're going to need to do is to download the app. The meetings themselves are started and run through an app, whether you're on a computer, a tablet, or a phone. So whichever device you're going to be used for, using for hosting, download the app onto that device. Here I am on my computer browser. I'm going to download Zoom Client for Meetings. If you're on your tablet or your phone, you can look in your wherever you normally download your apps. It might be called Zoom Client for Meetings. It might be called Zoom Cloud Meetings. So find the app and download it. Now that you have your app downloaded, Open the app and sign into your Zoom account. So use your email and password or however you created your Zoom account. I'm going to do that now and then I'll meet you inside the app. I'm now here in the home page. You can see home up here of the open app. I want to schedule a meeting, so I'm going to click schedule. Here's the dialog that opens to allow you to schedule your meeting and create the information that will be sent out to people to invite them. You can set the topic or the name of the workshop course class. You can choose when it will start, what date, what time. You can also set up how long it will be. All these things are estimates. You're able to start the call earlier if you want. You're able to go longer as long as you stay within the constraints of whatever Zoom plan that you have. I normally suggest people generate a meeting ID automatically because that creates a new ID for every meeting and it avoids people crashing your meetings. You'll want a passcode to make it even harder for someone to guess what the meeting ID would be. And for this call, we're going to be using a waiting room. I'll talk more about that once we actually get into the Zoom session itself. I often start with video off for both the host and the participants. You can set these controls the way that works best for you. I give people the chance to use the telephone or computer audio. And looking down here, today in this call, I'm going to just look at creating an invitation for other calendars, which means I'm going to take care of inviting. If you want to set up a Google Calendar invite or an Outlook Calendar invite, change your choice here and play around with these in the practice that I'll talk about at the end of the video. The advanced options, here's how I normally have those set up. I usually mute everybody on entry. I don't automatically record the meeting and right now I'm allowing people to come in anytime they want. Let's save this. And what that does is pop up the invitation information that you want to give to other people to invite them to your meeting. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. 
So that's the computer area that saves information for me to paste. The next thing I'm going to do is paste that into an email that I can send out to people. Now here's the email that I want to send out to people. I have the Zoom information, the invitation information already copied. All I have to do is paste it. Now I can use the keyboard shortcut, which on a Windows machine is Control V. can use a right menu option, paste that information, and now all of that is in an email ready to send out. People will join your call by using this URL, or they can also join it using the meeting ID and passcode. If you'd rather text this information or send it out in some other way, you can do that too. I strongly suggest you don't make this publicly available by posting somewhere, say your website or on Facebook in a public area. Let's get the fun started now. Let's start this Zoom meeting and look at the controls that you'll be able to use once your meeting is going. I'm looking at the Zoom app. This is the home page, and because this meeting I want to start is the next one I have scheduled, it's right here on the home page. You can also go to the Meetings tab, and you'll see a list of all your scheduled meetings, and you can click and then start one there. So I'm going to click and start this meeting. The first question that I'm asked is whether I want to join with my computer audio, and I do. That says I want to use the microphone and the speakers with my computer while I'm doing this Zoom call. We're going to be looking at the controls at the bottom of the screen and showing you the basic controls that will help you get started. And we'll leave the rest for you to explore later. If you're not seeing controls at the bottom of your screen, it's because you need to move your cursor down into the bottom and they will appear. Starting at the left, we have two very important controls. We have the microphone and the video controls. These are how you can mute and unmute yourself and show your video and turn it off. If you have a line across it, you are not doing it. So here right now, my video is being hidden. You're just seeing my profile picture, or if I didn't have a profile picture set, you would see my name. If I was muted, if I click on this, you'll see a red line across it and that's muting. When I unclick that, I'm unmuted and people can hear me. Now let's start my video. There's my video and now you can see me and everybody else on this call can see me. Moving across the screen, the next control we want to look at is the security control. Now this is super important. In fact, there's so many different options to run Zoom safely that I've created a whole video just about using Zoom safely. And I encourage you to watch that for more details. We're going to cover a couple of things here in this video. We're going to start by thinking about the waiting room. Now we enabled the waiting room in our invitation if, when we set up and scheduled the meeting. And we did that so that when someone joins the meeting, instead of just popping right in, they're placed in a waiting room where I can let them in. I can take a look at who's coming in and know whether I want to admit them. So that's enabled right here in the security control. Once everybody's in, if I want to, I can lock the meeting using this top choice, lock meeting. But remember, if you do that, nobody can come into the meeting again, including if someone gets kicked out because they have connection issues, they try and come back in. If it's locked, no one will be able to come in. So let's take a look at how we bring people in from the meeting room. Come back down here to our next little icon, the participants window. If I open that up, I can see everybody in the meeting, that's me, and I can see somebody in the waiting room. If there was multiple people in the waiting room, I would also have an admit all button so I could let everybody in at once. I can see who's coming in. If they have a profile picture, I see that. I see the name they've given. I can use that information to decide if I want to admit them or remove them from the meeting. I'm going to admit this person, bring them on in. And now there's two of us in the meeting. We are in what's known as the gallery view, where there's a little picture for everybody who's part of the meeting. You can also switch that up here from gallery view to speaker view, in which case you'll see the person who's talking, me in this case. And if the other person was talking, they would become the speaker view. Now in the participants window, it's showing the two different people here. 
and I have some options. I could ask this other person to unmute. If they were already muted, I would, or if they were not muted, if they're already unmuted, I could click to mute them. Really important is this control down here at the bottom, the mute all button. If you've got something happening, some noise, some sound, and you don't know who it is, all you have to do is click that button. Everybody is muted except yourself. Really handy thing to know. Next control over here is the chat window. This is where you can send messages to everyone. Type whatever you wanna say, hit enter, the message is sent out. And you have choices of who you're sending it to. You can send private messages straight to some specific person in your call. The share screen, the record button, the breakout rooms, you know, those are some fun things. Those are some of the bells and whistles we're gonna take a look at. But you already have the foundations for doing everything you need to do to have a call now. So now we're gonna add some extra sparkle to what you can do. Let's take a look at the record right away first because that's just really easy to talk about. You click the button, it's gonna record. Now, if you have a paid account, it's gonna first give you the option to recording to your own computer or to the cloud that comes with your paid account. So I'm gonna choose record on this computer. There's gonna be a little bar up here, a little sign that it is recording. I can pause a recording, I can stop the recording. I can also pause and stop down here. So once you record, at the end of the meeting, there's some processing done and then that file becomes available to you. Simple and easy. Let's look at the sharing screen option. Click the green button and it's gonna open up a dialog that shows you all the different things you can share. So these are the different windows that are open on your computer or on your tablet. They might be photos, they might be Word documents, might be the full screen, might be a browser window. Now you can also have the capability to share videos, but that does not work very well unless both you and the participants have really good bandwidth on your Wi-Fi. So I don't suggest doing that. However, sharing something like a picture can be a really fun thing to do. And now you're seeing this picture and what I see is this control bar up here that lets me stop share and do the other things that I used to have on the controls on the bottom of my screen. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and let you play with that more on your own. The other control I wanna show you is the breakout rooms. Again, this is a really fun feature that lets you split people up into small groups and talk to each other. It takes a little bit of time to explain all this, so I have a video waiting for you to learn to use breakout rooms. There's a reactions bar right down here. It lets people answer questions, thumbs up, wave hands, things like that, and you can see them during the video. Now when you're ready, you're all finished with your meeting, all you have to do is click this button I can hear the questions and the thoughts bubbling around. Ooh, screen share. What's the best way to use that so that I can get my point across? How do I use the breakout room so that people have lots of fun and really get into the experience I want them to have? There are so many things that you can do from Zo with Zoom to have really successful and fun workshops, classes, events. I just can't cover them all in this video. It would be way too long. I created a free five-day mini course for you to go further with Zoom. All the details are in the video description below. Now let's talk about how you can practice using the controls and using your screen share, anything you wanna do, you can practice before your very first call. Start a Zoom meeting for yourself, just like I did in this video. Join it and look at the controls, play with them to your heart's content. If you'd like to work with the waiting room or breakout rooms, you can call in and join the same meeting from one of your other devices. You could start the Zoom call, the Zoom meeting on your computer, and then use your smartphone to join it. When you join with a smartphone, make sure, or some other device, make sure that you mute the Zoom call and turn the volume off on the device, and that will avoid having feedback in your Zoom call while you're practicing. 
you are all set to go with this. You really are. Have lots of fun with Zoom.